Hotapu, everyone. This is King Ra Sumabathak Beimi, the world's first openly gay African king. And I wish to give you a very quick rundown of a list of correlates between the gods in your chart, if you were from a Kemetic perspective, or if you're from Yoruba. I've been getting a lot of questions from people who follow my channel who are of the Yoruba persuasion of pantheons, and they wanted to know how to see the Yoruba gods in the chart. And I am a Babalawo. I was initiated in Africa by Baba Afolabi Pega as a Babalawo or a high priest. So my spiritual roots in this life began with Yoruba. And so I have a soft spot for the Yoruba. I have a soft spot for the Orisha. And I'm grateful for all the wonderful joys they brought me. So I want to do this in honor of that root and in honor of people who need to see the connections between the different cultures. Remembering, they all come from one root African culture. We all came from Lake Nyanza, the foothills of the mountains of the moon, the great lakes of Africa. And we migrated from the great lakes called the waters of Nun in Egyptian or called Odudua in the Yoruba, those lakes, and we just migrated to different parts of Africa and began to take our systems and adapt them to our locale. The first, the sun Ra, in Egyptian Oharu, it's called, and the Yoruba called the sun sign in your chart Shango, or Dada, or Dambala. Dambala is a snake. He's the symbol of Kundalini. It is the West African version of the word Kundalini, the coiled snake. We call it Kut in Egyptian. The moon is called in Rinkam or Egyptian, Konsu or Ast. In Yoruba, it's Yemanja or Oshupa. Mercury in your chart, in Rinkam, we call Sebek, sometimes Apwat or Anpu or Aon. In Yoruba, the Mercury in your chart is called Eshu or the Elenini, the obstructors. In the Santeria system, they call Eshu Elegba, but it's best to call him Eshu. Venus is called in Egyptian or Rinkam Ahi or Hetheru. In Yoruba, it's called Oshu or Oba. The Earth, which in Western astrology is completely ignored in your chart, but it's a key part of Kemetic African astrology. We call the Earth in your chart Geb. The Yoruba call that point Aganju or Orisha Oko or Erinle. Erinle is a god, Erin. It means something like the elephant of the earth or the Erin. Like Erin, like iron, the iron of the earth. He's a great healing god. He is an herbalist. He works with healing medicinal herbs and roots. He likes water and rivers and things of that sort. In the Risha Oko, the word Oko means man, male, or phallus. It has other meanings, but Orisha Oko, the god of the phallus, he's a god of agriculture and of hoeing the ground, tilling the ground. The north node of the moon we call Nekabet. In Yoruba, that would be Oya, or the Iyami, what's called the witches. Okay? And when I was in Africa, Baba Pega told me that the Iyami were considered, they were often lesbians in Yoruba land. They were a very secretive group, as were the next listing, the Osho, called the wizards. Osho means wizards. But the Iyami were a very secret group, a very powerful group, a very feared group. No one messed with them. And we called them Nekabet in Egypt. The south node of the moon, called the moon's tail, the north, the dragon's tail, and the north node is sometimes called the dragon's head. But the south node of the moon, the dragon's tail, we call Wachit in Rinkam. And in the Yoruba, it's also Oya, again, in her more fiery form. And the Osho, the Osho, as I mentioned, are the 
gay sorcerers. They were the counterpoint to the Iami, and they were an, a conclave of very secretive gay sorcerers. Mars is Mahus in Rinkam or Herkohuti. The Yoruba called Mars in your chart Ogun or Shosi. Jupiter in your chart is in Rinkam called Ma'a or Tehuti. In Yoruba it's called Orumila. Orumila, heaven is my savior, heaven saves me. Also in Yoruba, Jupiter can be called Ella, Ella, or Olworogbo. Olworogbo. Either of those, Ella is kind of a deity, and Olworogbo are deities of ethics, morality, a very clean character and good head. Saturn, we call in Rinkam Pta. We also call it Seker. The Yoruba call it Babaluaye. Babaluaye. Sometimes Iku, but I would suggest you look at it as Babaluaye. Uranus in Rinkam we call Bes. The Yoruba would call it Oya Wini Wini. Oya Wini Wini. Oya means the terror, the, the, the wind goddess. Wini Wini, like ripping and tearing. Okay? Chain, a lot of quick change. Neptune, we call in Rinkam Nu, the Yoruba call Oloku. Sometimes you can call Oloku, you can call Nu Oduduwa. Oduduwa. Uh, but my experience has been, it's more like Oloku. But a person with their Neptune or Nu in their chart can speak to the archetype called Oduduwa. Then Pluto in Rinkam is called Set or the Benu bird. In Yoruba, it's called Oya Olododo or Osain. Oya Olododo means Oya, the goddess of truth, owner of truth and sincerity. Pluto is a planet of facing your fears. Well, to face your fear means you must face your truth. And that's always a ripping, tearing, transformative experience. So, Oya Olododo is the one who activates during a Pluto transit. As long as you face the truth, you'll survive Pluto, you'll survive Set, you survive Bennu. It's only when you resist the ugly truth of your condition, of your nature, or of the situation that it becomes difficult. Also, Osain, who's the root voodoo doctor worker in the Yoruba system, owns Pluto because you need magic and sorcery with Pluto. And I added one other heavenly body called Chiron, which is not a planet, it's an actually an asteroid, because I have found it very effective, and the asteroids, to my shock, are extremely accurate for prediction. I have a theory on that. I have a theory that I'm working out as to why that is. Basically, it's that the asteroids, since we are pe black people living in the modern world, are living in a culture not of their own. It's not an African culture we're living in. It's a European, westernized culture we're living in. And so the, I found that the asteroids are extremely accurate for prediction, down to names and dates. It's amazing what they can predict when you know how to manage them. And I feel it is because the asteroids are broken pieces of rock, like a bunch of pebbles that broke apart and are floating in our solar system. And the European people are owned by what we call Sebek, the god Sebek, the god who breaks things up into parts, a divisive force. And so the myths that, the Greek myths, which are European, that are attached to the asteroids really do reflect what's happening in Western or European or white people's culture. It seems that those myths attached to those rocks in particular really give you foresight as to what's happening in the white people's world, in their culture, in Europe, 
America and wherever they colonized. So that's why I added it. And Kanum is the ram god, the creation god who molded the Ka. But there's a particular document called the Famine Stila of Egypt, which refers to a time of a seven-year famine, and the pharaoh had to find out what's going on, and it was discovered way up south on the Nile, there was a temple of Kanum, the ram pottery god, who said, you've ignored me. And as a result, there's no water coming to feed your people. So Chiron is called the wounded healer, and that story fits very well with Chiron. In other words, Kanum felt slighted, wounded, and ignored. But when approached and given honor and ritual, healed the situation. The Yoruba called this would call this body Erinle, again that healing god, and Osain, the god of roots. And Osain was a god who was wounded. He was very arrogant in the Yoruba system. He was very cocky, and he challenged powerful forces, particularly Arumila, to contests, and he lost. And he lost a leg in the process, and he became one-legged, which is a wounded healer and he's a healer. So that's a classic story of Chiron. So I don't really d teach in the Yoruba system, but I wanted people who want to make correlations and connections to have a list that I have worked out over many years that I have seen to work. It has proven itself over and over and over. And I wish to give this as a gift to all of you who want to unite with the other systems of Africa because as a fist, the fingers are strongest yet. Dwao and Hotepu.